Eddie House, Amina Smith here with you. So we put a beat down on the Utah Jazz, 126 to 97. Eddie, I thought this would be more of a battle between the Jazz and the Celtics because the Jazz, they were coming in on that momentum, a three-game win streak. However, that is not what happened tonight. No, you thought it was a trap. Remember I said what trap I said? Trap game, I thought. I, yeah, it was a trap for the Utah Jazz. <laughs> They, they came right into that. They stepped right into that bear trap. You know what I mean? And we're really what it was, uh, I thought our ball movement was, was great. We took care of the basketball. Uh, besides that first quarter where we gave up, you know, six offensive rebounds, I thought we cleaned up the glass. And then when we did get the rebound, we pushed it and we ran down their throat. And it was something that Scal said at the beginning of the game um, that they're going to crash mm. and we got to keep them off the glass, but then they're going to be – not balanced, they're, they're gonna be imbalanced defensively on, on the back end. And we've seen that a lot, especially in that first half. We were able to just push the ball down the throat. As soon as we got the ball, we, we pushed it. We rebounded the basketball, we took care of it, and we made shots, we shared the basketball. So, I mean, it, it, was, it was winning basketball, Celtics basketball to a T tonight. And we also got a slam dunk from Sam Hauser, Another. AKA Slam Hauser in this matchup. He's with Abby Chin after this win. Sam, you guys took control of this game in the first quarter. You and O'Shea were diving all over the floor. What kind of response were you trying to show after the loss against Oklahoma City? Yeah, just come out and play Celtic basketball. Um, just making winning plays uh, and trying to do the little things well. And I think me and O'Shea brought energy, start the game, and kind of open up the game a little bit. And then our, and our other guys in the second unit came in and brought energy as well. So you know, that's what we're asked to do, and we tried to do that to the best of our ability. That bench unit came in with about four minutes left in the third quarter, up 30-plus. What kind of responsibility do you feel in those moments? Yeah, it's to let the standard not drop at all. I mean, we, we practice every day, we play every day, and our job is to make sure the level doesn't drop when we go in. And I think tonight we did a good job of that. You know, there's been times this season where we've let it drop a little bit, but um, I think, you know, we did a good job tonight. Chemistry building, without a doubt. How important is it to get those starters that much rest when you look at the road ahead? Yeah, it's always good when you can, you know, get them on the bench, rest their legs up, especially for a back-to-back. -back. And, and it's good for all of us to get more opportunity on the court as well. So just try to take advantage of it. Finally, Sam, as Jalen Brown goes by. This is nine straight games, so you guys have scored at least 120. What is keying this offensive surge for you guys? Just moving the ball, trusting one another, um, you know, doing what we do well, like knowing your strengths and playing to that. And, um, I think we're, we're starting to really click as a team, and that, that's pretty exciting. Speaking of clicking, JB walking by. Can we start calling you Slam Hauser? Thank you for coming up. down another oop? Yeah, I'll take it. Whatever you guys want. <laughs> Sam, thank you. Congrats. Oh, thanks. A look at the most consecutive wins to start the season. The Celtics right now 17-0 at home. That's tying that record from that 1957-1958 team. This presented by the Massachusetts Health Connector. It's open enrollment at the Massachusetts Health Connector. Act now and stay covered at mahealthconnector.org. Let's bring in Scal, who's live courtside. And Scal, the Celtics, they dominated this matchup early, led by 31 at the half. How did the Celtics establish their dominance in this matchup? They got out and ran. Uh, I, I thought Utah is a really good offensive rebound team, but everything you do in the NBA, these are great players that you're talking about. If you crash the board and crash three guys and you don't get it, it's our responsibility to push the ball on the other end. So it's like that whole counter thing. And Celtics did, they, they gave up six offensive rebounds in that first quarter. But overall, every time they did secure that defensive board, we were out and running. And then it's pretty much a simple combination. We have a team of a bunch of guys that can knock down shots, and they're not known as a great shooting team. So when you had fast breaks and you had knocking down threes, there's no way Utah can run with us at that point. Eddie, how much might have that loss to OKC maybe motivated this Celtics team even more? more coming into tonight well I, I think as, as as far as like motivation I think every single night and every game is going to bring its own set of motivation for you but the one thing I do I, I can't say is they could look at that third quarter and say hey man we dropped the ball there you can't get out score 40 to 15 you can't you can't do the things that you've done all season long and all of a sudden it just stops in a, in a particular quarter and that quarter cost you a game we've seen it cost them a, a series a, a playoff series we've seen them cost them the finals so to me, that though that that was that, that's like the most important thing is like you learn from your mistakes and you don't want to do that again. But Scal, I think Scal is right. Where you we talk about a team that can knock down shots and a team that can't make shots, a team that's going to crash the glass, 
but then not secure that rebound and then get ran on. And that's why you see the lopsided win for the Celtics. And Scout, let's go back to that first half. What did the Celtics get right to blow this game open and never have to look back? Yeah, I just thought they swarmed around defensively. I thought they, when they did rebound and they ran, and then offensively they moved the basketball. So it was weird. It wasn't like it led to a high assist number, but it led to great shots and great drive opportunities or great one-on-one -on -one opportunities to get to the basket. When you play in that style and you're moving it, you're appropriately aggressive, but you're still you know, sharing it with other guys, you're, you're going to be, you're, you're going to do really well. I talked about this, Eddie, I believe it was New Year's Eve when we were talking about resolutions for the Celtics team, and I thought about, you know, not playing with your food. And we know that on paper the Celtics team is better than the Utah Jazz. How did they do that tonight, not playing with their food? Well, I think the one thing, they, they came out aggressive mm -hmm. off rip, you know, on both sides of the ball. Um, and, and with playing their brand of basketball, we're going to move the ball, we're going to make pass up a good shot to get a great shot, and if it's a great shot, we might even pass that up to get a better shot, a wide open shot, not a late contest type the shot. Uh, the one thing I could say about offensively today, I thought their spacing was impeccable. Mm. If you look at the, the room that every player had to operate when they were taking their shot or getting into their shot or making that extra pass, you look at the spacing that this team had, I, I thought that, that that's the one thing that stuck out, uh, stood out the most for me offensively. Besides the ball movement, I know the, the assist numbers don't show that, but it was their spacing and the opportunity to operate and do whatever they wanted to do. Yeah, I know we talk a lot about this Celtics offense. However, what did, what did you see out of them defensively in this win? Scrambling. If, if this team is scrambling around and they don't overhelp, they get to the right guys, they guard their yard. If you do that, like there's, there's not a team in the NBA that can beat them when they're playing this style. Now, I get it. It's the Utah Jazz. It's a lot easier to scramble around and guard your yard against them than an SGA. But when they're playing that style, that's when they're at their best. So you think about you know, defensively, you scramble around, you cover for one another. A lot of times you're moving around the floor with your talk. Then you secure the ball, then you push the ball. If you don't get it, then you move it and you have proper spacing and you have the appropriate aggressiveness to get downhill. You add all that together and this is how you get, in the NBA it's hard to blow teams out, but this is how you get a blowout like this when you add those things together.